just one announcement. And I'm thankful there that I see a couple uniforms today, uh, some football jerseys. I forgot. I literally forgot. Today was the Super Bowl. Um, I should have gone over and changed after I saw Mary. <laughs> but thank you for, for those that, that, that did wear it. Uh, tonight we have a Super Bowl party, 5.30 here. Uh, we're going to be eating some soup and some chili and whatever else uh, people bring and enjoy that. Uh, we're just going to have some fun time hanging out and enjoying each other's company. Uh, so come, come, and uh, the football game will be on eventually. Um, but uh, I think uh, 6.40 or so is the, the, the kickoff. But uh, come, ha- have, have some fun. We'll play some cards or do whatever uh, and enjoy it. We're going to be in Matthew 19 uh, today, 16 through 30. Just then a man came up to Jesus and asked, Teacher, what good thing must I do to get eternal life? Why do you ask me about what is good? Jesus replied, There is only one who is good. If you want to enter life, keep the commandments. Which ones, he inquired. Jesus replied, You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not give false testimony. Honor your father and mother, and love your neighbor as yourself. All these I have kept, the young man said. What do I still lack? Jesus answered, If you want to be perfect, go sell your possessions and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When the young man heard this, he went away sad, because he had great wealth. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Truly I tell you, it is hard for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. When the disciples heard this, they were greatly astonished and asked, Who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, With man this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Peter answered him, We have left everything to follow you. What then will there be for us? Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, at the renewal of all things, when the Son of Man sits on the glorious throne, You who have followed me will also sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or fields for my sake will receive a hundred times as much and will inherit eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and many who are last will be first. Lord, open our eyes, open our ears, open our hearts to what you have to say. We pray this in your name. Amen. Now, Michael Moffat is a name that only probably one of you know. Uh, Me and Jenny, actually, two of us, uh, know Michael Moffat. He is uh, a person that works at Indiana Wesleyan. He also was a football player. He went to Fresno State in California and was drafted by Green Bay Packers. He ended up only playing a few games, four of them, I I, I believe, and had a total of four receptions and 87 yards. Not very much by anyone's uh, recollection that you look at him, you think, oh, whatever, right? He didn't do much. But I'm going to tell you, Michael Moffat is a great football player. He is a great football player. You see, Less than 1% of all high school athletes, football players, make it to the NFL. So to make it to the NFL, you have to be great. Now, we don't necessarily think about that because we just compare them to other football players, right? We compare them to other NFL players who are also greater, right? Like, they are just great. You have to be an amazing football player to make it to the NFL. Now, most... Football players are not Tom Brady. Tom Brady played for 23 seasons. That's not normal. That's very abnormal. Now, the average NFL career is 3.3 years. 
The NFL, of course, maybe you've heard of this an acronym yet, not for long, right? Because if you make it to the NFL through injuries or whatever it might be, just not uh, as strong as someone else or as someone younger and faster comes along and takes your spot. So the average NFL career is only 3.3 years. Now, every person that makes it to the NFL is great. I think, though, we just need to put them on a different comparison, right? We need to compare them uh, in a different level, just thinking that everyone is great. Not all of us are armchair, armchair quarterbacks, right? Like we try and compare it and we say who's good and who's not. But some football players just had, had natural skills that separated from the rest, but others had grit and work ethic and were hungry and wanted more. So they worked and, and, and got there. But like, I think culture is the same way. I think culture says to be great, you must work hard. Just like anything else. If you want to be an NFL football player, you work hard to get there. If you want to be a CEO of a Fortune 500 company, you work hard to get there. Culture says to be great, you must work hard. Because of this, we have learned life is about doing. You have to do. You have to have good work ethic. You have to achieve success in this world. Michael Jordan, not a football player, the goat of basketball, was known for his work ethic. Maybe you, you knew he gained a reputation uh, for coming early and staying late, working harder than anybody else on the basketball court. Brendan Haywood, uh, dur during uh, Michael Jordan's later years with the Washington Wizards, a teammate of his, said one time the veterans didn't have to come be there that day. So I asked him why he was there. He said, the better question is, why did I beat you here? <laughs> right? You, you, didn't, you had to be here, and I still beat you here. You know, I think this is the mindset that is still norm in today's society as it was even back in Scripture. The same thing that went through the rich young ruler probably asked, right? He probably thought, thought some of the same things that we do today. And it's probably the same thing that made him ask this question. What good thing must I do? Must I do to get eternal life? It was all about what he had to do. But Jesus skips the question, and, and he asks him a question. Why do you ask me about what is good? Jesus is saying here, he is asking the wrong question. Jesus continues, there is only one who is good. If you want to enter life, obey the commandments. Now at some time, at some point, this man learned that by doing or buying or earning, he could get whatever he wanted. But is this normal? Is it normal still today? Why, why is it normal? Because I, I think at that time, at least, they are still under the old covenant. Jesus had come but, but he hasn't fulfilled the law yet. It hasn't yet happened. So Jesus starts with obedience, and he continues with the commands. So the ma man asks, which one, which, which commands must I follow? And so Jesus starts to rattle them off. Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not give false testimony. Honor your father and mother. Love your neighbor as yourself. Now, as he starts off, right, do not murder and do not commit adultery, those are pretty good, right? Like, that, that's a good thing to follow, and I'm hoping everybody here has, has, has fallen in that. Or do not steal, right? Do not steal, right? All these things. Do not uh, give false testimony. Ooh, that's probably stepping on someone's toes, because I'm, I'm guessing at one point or another, as a kid, or maybe even as an adult, maybe yesterday, maybe this morning to your spouse, maybe you've told a little white lie, right? Maybe, just a little bit. But it gets harder and harder. Honor your father and mother. Have you always honored your father and mother? My mother and father are here. They, they, they can tell you I did not always honor them. Love your neighbor as yourself. That's hard. That's the second greatest commandment in the world, right? Like... That, this is hard. But for some reason, 
some reason, this rich young ruler said, all these I have kept. Well, isn't he a perfect little angel, right? Like, come on, there is no way he's kept all those. There's no way. But yet, he thinks he has, right? Like, either he is self-righteous or very unaware of his life, right? Like, there is no way he's kept all of these. Or he's one of the best people ever, right? Right? But yeah, maybe, maybe he seems, he feels like he's looking in the mirror when he looks at Jesus. Maybe he thinks he's the Savior. But he knew there was something missing in his life. He knew that he felt short. He, he knew that he lacked. He must have known that there were more commandments. He missed the greatest one, right? The greatest commandment, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. For some reason, Jesus didn't mention that one. May, 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 maybe the rich young ruler cut him off before he could get to that one. But there was also some other ones, right? If you read the Ten Commandments, so you know that there's the first one is put no other gods before me. But Jesus didn't mention that one. Or don't make an idol. Or don't misuse the name of the Lord. Or remember the Sabbath by keeping it holy. Right? He must have known these commandments existed. He, he must have known he fell short. Right? We all do. We all fall short. And that is why Jesus says, what's, what Jesus says next is vital. It's very important. If you want to be perfect... Sell your possessions, give to the poor, you will have treasure in heaven, then come and follow me. Now that's an interesting statement, if you want to be perfect. Does Jesus expect us to be 100% perfect? That sounds impossible, right? No one is perfect. But even Jesus says in Matthew 5, 48, Be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. So what is Jesus trying to say here? What is Jesus saying to be perfect? If you look at the phrase, be perfect, it is actually future tense. It means shall be. If you actually look at the idea of what perfect is, at least in, in, in the Greek sense of the word perfect, it means wanting nothing. Wanting nothing. Full-grown, mature, or consummate integrity. But for some reason, that wanting nothing stands out to me. I don't believe being perfect is about doing or not doing. I believe perfection is being content with following Jesus, wanting nothing else. You can get rid of everything else except Jesus and not be in lack. Being perfect, in other words, is wanting nothing but Jesus. This is when perfection comes. Nothing else matters but Jesus. Now, when I thought of these, some, some of these things this week, I actually had to check out with a, my theology prof to see if I was okay, right? Like, wanting nothing. To, to have nothing else matter than Jesus. So I threw that out to him. Is, is this right? Like, is this where I can take holiness? Is this where I can take being perfect? And he said, yes. I'm like, good, great, grand. That's, I'm glad I'm not off base. Right, I think this is what's happening at Asbury University. Wanting nothing but Jesus. And, and, they're, and they're just sitting in his presence and knowing that, that God is working. Now, maybe, maybe you haven't heard about Asbury. So chapel is a regular thing at, at Asbury. It happens... Uh, three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, at 10 a.m. all those days. Now, on Wednesday, 10 a.m., a few people stayed around a little later because they felt like God was moving, and, and chapel didn't end. And it continued. Continued for five more hours, six more hours, seven more hours, and it's actually still continuing right now. 24-7, there's worship going on at Asbury right now. That's a pretty amazing thing. Not any, like, specific things, just sitting in the presence and worshiping and music and, and maybe a sermon or two, right? But people are experiencing Jesus. 
these are some of the things that have been said. The Spirit of God is thick. You just feel it as you walk in and enter into the room. There's mostly focused on prayer and repentance and transformation. Now, like the rich young ruler, when he, he, the young man heard this, he went away sad, right? The rich young ruler heard all these things and, and went away sad, right? This man was wealthy. This man had power. And he could have everything that the culture told him he needed. But he was sad. Why do you think that is? Jesus found the man's idol. In fact, he found two of them. He found two of the man's idols. And, and, and the man was not willing to part with either. Wealth had become his idol. We all know that one. That one stands out. right? He loved money. He, he was used to having money. He, he was able to buy anything he wanted. Money gave him power. And he was a ruler, right? When, 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 when a ruler is told to come follow somebody, right? Jesus says, sell all these things, right? That, that was his first idol. But the second idol was following. He was used to people following him. He didn't want to follow Jesus. He wanted people to follow him. He was used to power. He was used to control. He was a leader, he was a ruler, a king, a president, whatever it might be, right? But he wanted people to follow him, and he did not want to give that up either. He didn't want to give up the money and the riches. He walked away sad because he was very rich, it says. But I think we missed that he didn't want to follow either. And that was getting in the way of him following Jesus. This cannot happen. If anything gets in the way of following Jesus, it is an idol. Jesus turns to his disciples. This is when he says, It is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And his disciples were astonished. Because if they can be saved, then who can be saved, right? That's what they say. Who can be saved? With this, with man, this is impossible. In other words, salvation is not in our hands. It's not in your hands, it's not in my hands. But with God, all things are possible. In other words, it's in God's hands. This rich young ruler had spent his whole life doing, thinking good can outweigh bad, but that he could follow the commandments and, and that eternal life was something in his control. But when it came down to it, salvation was in God's hands. And he could not throw around his power. He could not give any amount of money for it. He could not just do it. And he couldn't release it. And he didn't follow Jesus. And therefore went away sad. Not receiving eternal life. Now Peter has this thought, and Peter's one of those people that always thinks his thoughts first before he actually just thinks it. But Jesus, or Peter says, Wait, he just described us, right? So this is what he says. We, we left everything to follow you. What then will there be for us? And Jesus replies, You will sit on 12 thrones, judging the 12, tri 12 tribes of Israel. Anyone who left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or fields for my sake will receive a hundred times as much and will inherit eternal life. Then he continues, but the first will be last, and many who are last will be first. Right? This ruler would have been first in many people's eyes. Maybe like Tom Brady, Michael Jordan. He would have been first. Culture builds up the rich, right? The powerful, the great, the, the famous, right? We, we build up sports heroes. We build up movie stars. We build up the, the, these rich and famous people. I think this is why, like, because most people have this, this mentality, I think. This is why in Matthew 18, just a little bit before this happens, the disciples come to Jesus and they ask, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus replied, unless you change and become like this little child, these little children, you'll never enter the kingdom of heaven. In other words, you have to humble yourself. 
Brendan Manning writes in the Ragamuffin Gospel along these lines. The kingdom belongs to people who aren't trying to look good or impress anybody, even themselves. They are not plotting how they can call attention to themselves, worrying how their actions will be interpreted, or wondering if they will ever get gold stars for their behavior. Any of you grow up in a classroom or Sunday school room that you were received gold stars for your behavior? I remember each week, you know, put these different stars, and it would line up. I, I, I sometimes had stars, sometimes didn't. Sometimes I fell a little short. Sometimes I felt bad because I, I didn't. Sometimes I could care less because it was just a gold star on, on a little piece of paper, right? It didn't mean, it matter to me, right? I think sometimes we still live in this mentality, though. Let's get a gold star. Like, let's enjoy uh, standing in the spotlight. Be getting approval from other people. It's been taught to us from a very young age. Right? All the, and, and I think sometimes that, that's, that's why we do it. Right? Because we like the approval of other people. And I think sometimes that's why when a child or someone 18 and under is asked, what do they want to do for their lives? They say, famous. They want to be famous. 50% of young people say they want to be famous. I think when you, when you start to get a little bit older, you just realize not everybody can be famous, right? But something about being known and people understanding who they are and, and, and that they're being heard. Maybe that's why uh, so many people put, put, put up uh, videos to be liked or to be shared. You know, it, it, it's about this attention. They, they, they want people's approval. And may, maybe that's why, why we post on, on Facebook. It's not just young people. It's, it's everybody, right? We just want approval. Now, a few days ago, Tom Brady retired. And some of you are the happiest people on the face of the earth, right? It's okay. I fall in a different camp. Maybe some of you are happy that I forgot to wear a jersey today. Because the only jersey I own is Tom Brady's, back when he played for the Patriots. Not, I do not have a Tampa Bay Buccaneers jersey. But Tom Brady was on 60 Minutes. I actually did post this on Facebook a little while ago, but I want to show you this video of a, of a 60 Minutes episode that um, was released in 2005. So this is when he was still a young quarterback. He had already won three Super Bowls, but check out this video. He has three Super Bowl rings, but he's still missing something. In fact, he says the line, there has got to be more than this. There's got to be more than this. And then the interviewer asks, what do you think that is? And he says, I wish I knew. Tom Brady has everything anyone could ever imagine. Anyone. He has more money than he ever needs. He has seven Super Bowl rings now, not just three. 
right? But he feels like he's still lacking something. He's a rich young ruler walking away sad. But yet, that's what so many people are, are trying to attain for. They're, that's what they want. Tom Brady is unsure of what he is missing, and I think we all have that answer. We all know what he needs. We all know what he needs. And it's Jesus. There are a lot of people out there searching, just like Tom Brady. And they're looking for something, knowing that there has got to be more than this. For meaning and purpose. They have hope that there is something out there, but they just don't know. I think we need to help them be, to be the light. Last weekend, we, we heard a story of, of, of this lady, uh, Danielle, who uh, tells this story of this guy who, who uh, is, is part of her uh, church, her outdoor church, right? And, and, and she's preaching about being a light. And, and, and the guy has this great way of saying it. He, he, he has almost like the fine line of, of, of spiritually mature and, and mental health issues, right? Somewhere, somewhere there. But he's like, I want to be a light! And he leaves the, the, the church service that's going on. I don't know how big it was. But he runs around the park. I want to be a light. She's like, she t- goes after him. What's going on? Just sits him out. I want to be a light. I think sometimes we, we, we need to not care about what other people think what people are going to say about us. Be a light. The rich young ruler went to Jesus to find the answer. And Jesus revealed what that was to him. He revealed the answer is, come follow me. Get, Get rid of what's holding you back and come and follow me. And the rich young ruler wasn't willing to surrender to someone else's plan. He was not willing to follow. What about us? What about us? Are you wanting something but not willing to follow the one who has it? Are you longing for forgiveness but not willing to repent? Are you wanting salvation but not willing to surrender? You want Jesus more than anything else? If you only had Jesus, would it be enough? Or are you walking away sad? I ask the worship team to come forward. Lord, if we only had you, Would it be enough?